Welcome to episode 102 of In Touch with iOS, a podcast that talks about iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and related technologies, plus tips, apps, and gear. I am your host, Dave Ginsberg, and my co-host, Warren Sklar, is here. How are you doing, Warren? I am uh, actually pretty good. The uh, week is flying by. Yeah. It's Thursday. Tomorrow might be Friday. I'm thinking about calling out tomorrow just to uh, get a three-day weekend in, and uh, it's been... It's been yeah, busy uh, early, but now it's slow, so why not? How about you? Working? Yeah, uh, steady, steady working. Um, lots of stuff happening with Apple, I tell you. It's, uh, the next two weeks are going to be... Uh, crazy, man. Uh, a little crazy, I must yeah, say. Yeah, the rumors, so, the rumors are uh, flying. Yeah, they're flying. So we're going to touch a little bit on that uh, this That's week. some money uh, saved up in the bank. Worldwide Developers Conference, yeah. It's a week from Monday, so we'll give you some of our uh, our advanced thoughts of where we're, where it's going to be at, and of course we'll have a very comprehensive show uh, that we the week after that uh, show occurs, and um, we'll uh, also talk about beta. Beta's a little active this week, uh, not much, but enough, and uh, and then we'll get a little bit of discussion about Plex. I mean, I got some apps we'll talk about, so it might be a little bit short show this week. We'll see where we go. Um, so a couple items that were in the news this week caught my eye. Um, first one is uh, back rumors. Apple is discontinuing iTunes University or iTunes U at the end of 2021. Uh, Apple is going to discontinue this at the end of 2021, according to a new support document that was shared by them, the company. Um, they are saying the tools are going to be replaced by next generation apps for teachers and students, which include classroom and st- schoolwork, plus the Apple school manager tool, which is all that stuff is none of us really probably see unless we work in education. Um, but, uh, uh, I thought iTunes U was kind of neat because you had a lot of stuff from like Stanford and a lot of other universities and other places like that, that would publish some of their, um, their content that you got to take for free. I mean, you don't necessarily get a college credit for it, but, um, uh, but it, it, I think it had been lagging for quite a while. I don't think it was very active. Uh, did you ever, uh, ever take a look at any of that stuff? In no, iTunes U? I never did, but I heard good things and I could only imagine they're going to make yeah. it better uh, and improve it up. So that's uh that's a good thing. Uh, you know, education um, is changing. Obviously everything's going to go, uh, right. you know, a lot of it is still going to be remote learning. And even when things get back to normal, they're still going to do a lot of remote learning things because, you know, they're, they're going to try to get used to it and perfect it. So, um, you know, it's going to probably be, uh, it's going to definitely improve. I'm guessing. Yeah, I think so. I think the, for the for the education, for sure. I, I've kind of peeked at some of those new tools they have, and it's they're they're, they're pretty neat. So, but uh, it was uh, it was well overdue. So, um, but uh, let's go ahead and move on. And I think let's be a, a bit of a discussion here. We'll talk about the Worldwide Developers Conference. Uh, uh, as we record this, uh, Apple announced uh, the the full lineup. Finally, we've been waiting for a long time to find out what uh, what was going to be happening. So, of course, the uh, the special event keynote will will happen on June 22nd, 10 a.m. Pacific. And uh, I am uh, as excited to look forward to it and, uh, and, what, uh, and to, uh, to see it. Um, I believe if you have the developers app, and if you are a developer, you're gonna, you'll be able to see it. But I believe they'll also broadcast it probably on their web, website as well as on YouTube and, and uh, through Apple TV, just like they always normally do with the, with the event. Uh, but the neat thing this year is no, nobody has to pay for it. And it's all virtual and all these sessions are going to be happening, uh, after that. Um, uh, they'll, they'll have another event at, uh, 2 PM Pacific, which is called the plat platform state of the union, uh, which, uh, talks about all the platforms, uh, the iOS, Mac OS, and, and so forth. A lot of stuff that many of you probably don't ever, uh, would ever watch. Uh, what's your thoughts so far with the, the excitement of all the, the announcement of, uh, all the events? Oh, I, I figure I'm, I'm still going, even though it's virtual. I'm, I'm there. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to be going. I get to actually go yeah. this time because I've never, been, I had yeah. never been. So now I'll be there virtually. No, I'm, I'm, no, I'm actually going to, co- uh, you know, I'm just going to like stand outside the door and see if they let me in. Let me in. No, are you? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> what do I think? I think the um, the the question is uh, how the 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 keynote's going to be. Um, is it going to be in front of a couple of employees? Mm-hmm. Is it going to be like a kind of a one of those pre-recorded things that they do? Um, you know, they actually could 
get really creative and they they've done some really cool things yeah. before where uh um what was what was the one one year where Tim Cook was I forgot what he was, but he he was somewhere and like he was in different countries and then you see him running through the hallway. All and right. then he, he comes in through uh, with the phone, you know. So, you know, they could really do a pretty neat uh thing if they want. So I'm looking forward to that. And then uh yeah, the the, the I did go to the one WWDC and they did also have the state of the apps uh there too. So they'll do that as well. Um right. I don't know if that's gonna be uh public or not. Um but it, it's cool. I, I, I'm guessing you and I, for the most part, with we have the developer accounts and we're kind of interested in, in the yes. um, in the future of the operating systems. I'm guessing we'll we'll watch the keynote and maybe a couple of the sessions and not really be too interested in most of the other things. So, yeah. um, but it's good. You can pick and choose, and I don't think they actually gave an end yeah. date either, did they? Um, I, oh no, it's going to the 26th, it? so it'll okay. be that whole week. So yeah. There's there's hundred there's about a hundred uh, different sessions. Uh, our link will be on the show in the show notes to the actual announcement on Apple's website. Um, they they will have labs, but I guess you have to make appointments uh, if uh, if you're an, with an Apple engineer uh, to get any technical guidance on Apple technologies. Yeah. Probably too late to do that. I'm sure there's lots of people trying to jump on that. So, um, but you know. We're, we both have developer accounts. I don't develop apps generally, uh, but I have it for, for work and for, or for play. Yep. Uh, Same with that. And, and it's not terribly expensive. It costs a hundred dollars. Anybody can get a developer's account if you want, so, if right. you so choose. Um, so, so it's not, too I, I like and, seeing, I like seeing the, you know, the way the operating systems are going I, for work for, for both of us. We, yeah, me too. It, it is related yeah. to our work. We like to see, you know, try to get a head start on, on the, getting a a grasp on it so it's 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 not a total for fun kind of thing i think you know there is a little bit of a work involved with us you know kind of perfecting the operation you know we got to show other people how to do it so we got to do it too so plus it's fun and i like breaking my devices yeah so you know uh if you if you if you uh, get the developer's app, you have to have the actual developer's app installed on your on your device to look at the the, the, the sessions and be able to watch it. There's vid, there's there's a link for videos which you'll be able to watch, um, and a lot of great tech talks are in there. And and again, I'm not, I I'm not sure. I, a lot of the stuff you may not be able to see unless you have a developer's account. Um, so which is fair. I mean, they're doing this for free this time, and they, they usually what charge like twenty five hundred dollars to to go in person. Yeah, it wasn't so that much. Not cheap, and plus it's hard. And plus it's hard to to get because it's it's limited it's limited uh, uh, attendance. So, yeah, too. I, I put in for a, I put in for a one year, thinking it was never going to happen, and then uh, they emailed me and said we just charge your credit card, and I said. Guess I should probably <laughs> I said, so tell, said, tell said, my wife that I did that. <laughs> I said, "Hey, honey, two grand just got charged yeah. my account." <laughs> oh, and I'm going to California uh, by myself. Oh yeah, and by the way, we're going. To, I'm going yeah. to San Jose. But I loved it. I actually, you know, I went. I didn't know anybody, and I still just yeah. went by myself. And you know, I uh, I had a great time. You know, it's it was cool hanging out in the uh, in the, the oh absolutely in the, uh, in the the Marconi. Marconi Center. Marconi Center, I think it was at that time, I and mean, now they have it at Apple. Apple yeah, Park. probably um, nicer, but whatever. Um, at the uh, Steve Jobs Theater is where the event yeah. is. Uh, um, and uh, so, uh, but I also, I think they also have that alt conf conference they have um, that for people who can't get in. Yeah, of um, course not. To st- you can, I don't know if you went, if you check, if you check that out or not, but I know, I know our friend, our friend, my friend, our friend Chuck Joyner goes there every year too. Uh, so. I, I was invited to um, a couple of, not there's sure. a couple of parties that were there and I kind of, I remember going to Yelp. Yelp had a, like a party thing and that oh, was kind of yeah. fun. And uh, sure. yeah, it's a good time, but you know, this is cheaper and easier. Although, you know, when, yeah. you know, with working, it's not as, you know, since we're working, it's not that, it's not that easy yeah. to sit there and watch, you know, to watch all of it. So I got to clear my schedule for the keynote, and that's no. that's about it for the most part. I'm, I think I'm taking at least a half day, maybe the day off. On, keynote uh, day. On, uh, on the uh, keynote yeah. day, I usually do. Uh, in the years past, I would be on on Mac for Mac guys only. I don't know where that's going to probably end up happening. Uh, probably for the first time in quite a while, once we do a reaction time episode. So, so maybe that'd be good this time. I can actually watch it live, and uh, I'll react after. <laughs> 
well, because I will have an Apple user group meeting with the iPhone special interest group on the that next day on Tuesday. So it's going to be mm-hmm. a busy week. There's going to be a lot to talk about. And then our podcast. And I will, so be, you know, make sure you, t- you, you tune in. Listen, um, uh, this is uh, June 22nd is the keynote. So that Thursday we'll uh, be recording and that, that so it's uh, a week from Monday, the crazy stuff. Yeah. So yeah. Um, we also have a link. We also have a link on the, on Max on the Mac rumors. Of course, we got to, we got to hear all the stuff uh, that what's happening with, uh, with that. And, uh, and, I like to touch upon this topic. It's a related technology because uh, iPhones and iPads actually touch Macs. Of course, um, the whole the whole discussion about ARM based processors. Now, we had quite a discussion about it yesterday on Mac Mac to the Future Go, and um, and uh, I, I I've got mixed feelings about the ARM processor with Macs, and uh, and of course those are the same processors that uh, the iPhones and the iPads have now currently. Um, what were your thoughts on the arm, on the whole arm thing with Max? Uh, my main thought is, if they're gonna do it, is they're gonna do it properly. Uh, people are like scared of this, you know. I, I, I well, the only thing I know is they're not gonna make it so they piss off, you know, the eighty percent of their user base. You know, um, they're not gonna leave people who just bought a fifty thousand right. uh, dollar. MacBook, uh, uh, Mac Pro <laughs> in the dust uh, with that. Right. So, I mean, there, there's going to be, I, if they're doing it, they've, they're in the process or they're done writing some kind of, you know, framework that's going to be easy to just have both of them running at the same time. It's not going to be an emulation layer. Yeah. It's not going to be, it's just going to be uh, native on both and they're going to continue doing both until they, they phase out the uh, Intel chips. Right. Um, you know, that, you know, I know there was bad history and I know they they did something with the, when they went to Intel and people were a little upset about that Rosetta layer thing, but yeah. I, Things yeah, are a little different than to the, the, the Apple, you know, Apple had less to lose and more to gain back then where now they have more to lose and less to gain, uh, as a company they're yeah. you know, they, they basically, um, you know, back then they had to, they had to make some decisions for the future. Whereas this, they, you know, even if they never switch to art, there, there's no real, there's, they don't have to do it if they don't want to have to do it. So they're going to, if they're right. going to do it, they're going to do it the right way. And, um, you know, uh, we'll see. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not a, I'm not a, you know, programmer or developer. I, you know, people worry about, no, people worry about programs not working. People worry about boot camp not working. I mean, who knows? They might have this all figured out already. And they, they probably, and this yeah. I know, they have Macs running on ARM in a, at Apple headquarters right now, and they know what it's doing. So, oh, yeah. sure. So we'll see. I mean, it's, it's yeah. interesting. And, uh, Rumors, rumors say say that uh, that the first uh, chip will be an A14 chip uh, that is destined for the 2020 iPhone lineup. Uh, that would would be this you know similar uh, chip that would uh, if, if not the same or similar chip to the Max, uh, being the main CPU, and there would be probably a GPU neutral engine for machine learning. So. Um, so it's definitely going to be interesting. And, you know, there were, there was a lot of speculation to thinking maybe they would come up with a iPad type, um, um, Mac. <laughs> I think we had that discussion yesterday and I, I, I was kind of skeptical because I, I just do not think that Apple would ever make the Mac OS operating system with, uh, with having touch, uh, support. Uh, uh I mean, mm, psh- no i i mean I, the way the way is yeah. laid out now it wouldn't make a good touch computer um to be honest with you i don't think even windows is a good touch interface um either so yeah i'll agree with so, that and look at you with uh, we're recording live you're using the xp back yeah well so. i figured it's a little <laughs> yeah it's a little techie so why not um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I have a, I have a, a couple. Win- I got, I, I've had Windows tablets in in the past, and very rarely yeah, do too. I um um touch the screen. Um, so I don't think Apple's going to do it either. I think the they'll they'll probably just continue yeah. with what they got on the Mac. I think they they aren't going to change it much, and I think um you know there might be some new designs because the 
processor could be thinner than it is now, which is good. Um, you know, yeah. uh, they could kind of hopefully get a little bit crazier with designs. I don't know how or why, but, um, you know, yep. at least on a laptop, there's not that much you could do um, crazier if you're not going to have it as a touch input or you're not going to be able to bend it backwards to make it a tablet, things like that. Um, but for, for a, you know, desktop, you could do some pretty funky things with a thinner, a thinner display. So, yeah, yeah, you could. Um, same thing can go along with the, uh, the keyboard. Um, uh, and we have a story in there. I'll talk, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, the magic yeah. keyboard, you know, that's why I was there. We're thinking maybe they would come up with that type of, uh, Mac that you could take it off the keyboard or. Or something crazy like that. Well, they're talking about the new iMac being released with the uh, T2 chip in it. Uh, that's the rumor. And right. I thought yeah. if you have the T2 chip, um, you could get the fingerprint reader in there too. But you can't get the fingerprint reader. And like right. So if you could do that, are they going to put it under the, um, you know, the, the Mac? keyboard since it's like wireless or bluetooth or, or something like that is it going to work who knows but um you know people have been asking for something like that on the imac for a while uh uh and basically um you know having uh the maybe the touch bar on an imac or having the uh the fingerprint reader on the imac uh on a separate keyboard would be yeah you know in the uh in the future yeah yeah um the uh uh so moving on to kind of the software ex- uh, updates i'm not going to go through there was an entire list on uh, mac rumors but uh, i'm going to touch upon a couple things that i think the biggest thing that's been talked about a lot is the home screen being able to have a list view which i, I if that happens i'm i'm totally stoked because it's such a pain to organize okay. apps and i tell you and, and try to find them too so i'm 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 so hoping that's gonna come come yeah. true i'm sure you do think yeah so. i've tried i've tried to you know i i got I got my things kind of organized in a folder, but um, it's fairly good, but it's, it's, you know, I, I would like to do more. I would like to have them alphabetical thing, you know, whatever. But every time, uh, you know, uh, to be honest with you, it's, it's one of the the few reasons why I refuse to, um, and I want to, I want to like um, do a, a fresh install of iOS on my phone, um, yeah. you know, basically, uh, without doing a restore of a backup, just to kind of clean up a little bit, but then I just don't feel like <laughs> rearranging yeah. my home screen again. So, so it, it's a lot, it's a lot <laughs> exactly. of work. Tell me about it. Same thing when you, if you do it on your Mac, try to do a, do a, do a, no, boot yeah, nuke. exactly. Well, the Mac's um, a little bit easier to at yeah. least arrange, but the, the iOS home screen and I've tried, yeah. I've tried. I, okay. It's a lot of work to set back up the way you yeah. like it too. Though. And I've tried I amazing because uh, they say you could have like a home screen thing to, uh, it's just yeah. amazing that there's no, even now before they go to a different home screen, possibly it is amazing now that I can't see my home screen on my Mac on a big, nice screen and just drag things around uh, the home screen yeah. and save it. Yeah. I mean, they, and there was apps like that you could do it in the past. Did you? Um, I forgot. Oh no! It was it was when I when you man, you were able to manage it. In you iTunes, could do it in right. iTunes, but the, but, for whatever reason, the, the yeah. UI in iTunes they it was back. horrible too. It it, it was almost yeah, it was as horrible. bad as doing it, it on the little screen. It, was, <laughs> yeah, I remember it, that. it just there just yeah. should just be like a total easy way to like right click on something. That's what you need, like an icon where you can right click on there on the, on the Mac and say move to this yeah. folder, and then something that says sort alphabetically. Yeah. You know it it's it's a mess but you know i generally i just yeah. use muscle memory and i pull down and search whatever i need to find anyways at this point uh, yeah, i yeah. do the same it's but I, i'm i i'm i'm excited to, uh, again this is all rumor but you know it's it, it's it's pr- it's pretty solid but these the back rumors is very good getting the information so i i think uh i think yeah, well they happen. got an early build um uh supposedly. yeah they, there was a leak out there so yeah so they got a lot of stuff already yeah uh, because uh, there's a link for the, their about their roundup. So um, the other thing is messages. I think messages will get some app mentions. I think they're going to sync it along with uh, the Mac version of messages. So they both look the same, which I think mm-hmm. would be uh, a good thing. And then uh, I was hoping that they would come up with some type of archive type of thing. You can archive messages um, 
a little easier than you can now. Um, and iAmazing does a great job where you can, if you do hook your iPhone to that, that app application that's on your Mac, um, you are able to you know download all your messages. I just did it. I said, it's amazing. You could just, you could create a PDF of, of an entire, um, uh, an entire message conversation then for, for legal reasons too, when people want to share that information to, to, to the judge or something. So that's obviously one way of doing it is by using an app like that. But I think, I think messages needs a little bit of, needs a bit, a little bit of, love. And I think, the, I think the messages, uh, they're going to port over to the, um, uh, to the Mac, they're going to use uh, the, the catalyst to do it. Um, which is good because right. the, the messages on the, uh, on the Mac is certainly not as good as messages on iOS um, for a couple of reasons. And, right. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, it would be definitely a good thing. And there'll be more emojis. Of course, there's always more emojis. Yeah. Of course. I mean, you, you can't have enough yeah. emojis. I'm lucky if I, I, I use maybe six of, of, of the hundreds or thousands that they're already that are at my, at our fingertips. The, the thumbs yeah, up, think, just so I don't have to yeah. say anything else. Thumbs up. <laughs> and the, I, well, I do the smiley faces yeah, and yeah. Yeah, I use it's it just, a, and the, and the cool, I like, I like the cool uh, one. The glasses. Well, yeah. The, I just like the <laughs> thumbs up because it's basically the minimal amount. I, the minimal <laughs> amount of communication I could do with somebody just telling them that it's thumbs good. up. Thumbs I like up, it. Thumbs up. It's fine. <laughs> it's all good. I like it. Yep. Um, and yeah, so, uh, 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 typing into candidates for group chat. Cause you never, you know, when you had a group chat, you would not, between all iPhone users, you would never know, uh, who's typing. Uh, and now you'll have that, you know, that the, 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 the bubble with the dots telling you that someone's oh, yeah. typing, uh, in a group chat. Right. Um, right. And, uh, and also an option to mark all messages unread if you so choose. And I don't think you'd be able to do that once you read it once. So. So some, some, some enhancements I think will come across, uh, with that. Um, other thing is going to be interesting to see is, is the AR, the augmented reality app that, uh, but Apple's potentially going to be planning on introducing uh, in iOS 14. I actually, I was at a, a, a press conference this morning, uh, this the, earlier this afternoon. Uh, I forgot the name of the company, but, the they're, they're already coming out with a way where you can have, excuse me, have a picture of, uh, of like a living room or a room and you can configure it real easy just by using your iphone and you know putting things in place so uh i i know i do you like i'm, I'm assuming you're into ar you like that stuff right um i don't know well <laughs> i haven't used it i have a oculus uh go uh so i have a yeah. vr headset um and um it, i like that and i think that's kind of neat yep. and ar you know ar is not going to be what i think ar is going to be at first um uh, which is fine um but you know hopefully years to come it's ar is going to be awesome i mean just having yeah. you know just basically you know you, you look at the the future tech movies and have these things on your face that kind of tell you you know basically everything you need to know or everything that it could tell you um about what's in front of you and what you know what's around you so that's uh yeah it's exciting Definitely exciting, um, but it's not going to be. Yeah, uh, the first iteration of it's going to have some with the glasses no. at least. Uh, I'll have some issues. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. But with the uh, yeah. with the app, I don't know. We'll see. I'm curious, but it's going to be interesting for sure. For iOS 14. Um, this is a, this. I, I can't wait. Can't find out about it. Um, one last one I want to touch on, and we talked about this last week when I would I did my uh, discussion about the third-party browsers is 30 party default apps in general and the, the the big three you got your mail app um your your browser and your music app um but, but apple may actually you know uh allow to set third-party apps as their default so if you want your music app default to be spotify then well, so be it make it spotify um you know apple's been opening up uh, everything else by by uh allowing um um apps to be available like on Android. Um, so why not allow people to have defaults on iOS? I mean, same thing with Macs. You can have a default browser for your Mac. You have a default browser for your, I mean, I don't want to know about music on, on the Mac. I think you have to use the music app for, for, for that, but, uh, but why not? Like, why, why not allow these apps to, to, to be your default? You don't have to be stuck with what, what Apple says you have to be stuck with. Don't you think? Yeah. I mean, a lot of it, 
I think would be more um more for the uh, hey yes thing um because a lot of things that you yeah. say will open up to default apps so, and even though you can do it by saying like hey yes have a open this or hey yes have g open that um right. it's a pain um you know so if you could set your uh if you could set your uh, default app uh and and uh, uh Siri knows about it and then you say, you know, hey, right. uh, S, uh, you know, play music, uh, and you don't have to specify what app to use. That would be a that would be a good thing. Absolutely. Ooh, I just got um, a, so, I just got yeah, an email from uh, the, to check your email. We just got emails from the uh, Apple Worldwide Developers Conference 2020. Here's a lineup, special keynote. Yeah, we're 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 yeah, official. This is huh? a, and now you could download the app. Yeah, there you go. It's it's coming. Yep. yep, there it is. Apple developer. We're official. official we're going. So yeah, right, right. Good, good, good live yeah, as we're, we're recording we're, this. We, we got official we're, emails. We're going. Uh, so, it should, so, so it should be fun. Um, Watch OS, Sub 7, not much to talk about. Uh, I'm not going to really get to spend a lot of time in it. I know we talked about the blood oxygen, oxygen tracking. Uh, they found some code in that was leaked uh, in iOS 14 uh, that the Series 6 watch, which is probably going to come out uh be able to detect the blood oxygen levels i'm not going to go in too much into that but uh i know it's you know interesting a lot of people are interested with the with health and being able to do that i know they already been talking about being able to check uh the glu- blood glu- glucose levels uh for diabetics i mean because that's a that'd be a huge you know having to prick your finger all the time to test your blood and you can just have it right in the watch be able to do it um so i mean what did you think of some of that yeah, stuff that health is uh definitely a big thing for them and uh yeah, it's huge. It will definitely, yeah. Uh, uh, see, I mean, eventually, eventually, I think they'll need. I, I don't think it's going to do much with the current watch they have now, but you know, maybe future watch watches right. will have more. You know, you're going to put the thing on. It's going to have like uh, tubes and wires sticking out of it with the uh, uh, with yeah. things like that. What you know, what I didn't, we didn't see much in the uh, sleep tracking. Um, no, yeah, which is kind of strange yeah. too, but yeah, yeah, I'm excited about that. Yeah. I like my watch. So, yeah, well, but we'll we'll definitely save all of our uh, discussion when that comes out. Uh, to, like I said, a week from Monday uh, as we record this, uh, it's going to be interesting to see. Um, uh, next story I found uh, was interesting, and this is probably more rumor for sure than anything else. And I don't know if it would ever come true is, you know, they, of course we talked extensively about, we both have the magic keyboard um, for our our iPads. Uh, And uh, of course that's got the floating stand, the trackpad. It's got great ergonomics. It's, it's, I love it. And you're, you're happy with it. I assume. Definitely good purchase. Yeah. I think it was, it was good. I enjoy it. Um, A Twitter user. I'm, I don't even know who the hell this person is. Love to yeah. dream has hinted that a magic key, yeah. a magic keyboard for other iPad models could yeah. come out. And I'll be interested to see how that could happen because first off, you know, yeah, it's magnetic, but how, how is it going to connect? I mean, is, it's going to be, it's, it would obviously have to be standalone Bluetooth. It couldn't, you know, connect directly like it does with right. the pro. Um, and, uh, yeah, what do you think about this? I think it's, I uh, think it's a little, off I didn't, the, I didn't off see the, the article, but I know they have, um, well, they have. They don't have the magic keyboard, but they have the one for the i. Yeah, uh, the what's the one with the trackpad? That's a bridge. Bridge is a bridge. but not that's and the Logitech, Logitech one mm-hmm. for the normal iPad. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. is it for the ten point five? Is that what that Logitech is for? I think it was. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean that looks more like a. It looks more like a surface uh, keyboard kind of thing. It's thinner, and um, and kind of fabricy. Um. Yeah, yep. it's going to come down to price. Nobody's going to buy a $239 iPad and put a $350 keyboard on it. Uh, <laughs> so that I mean, true. That, that will be that. I mean, um, I haven't seen that many other, you know, I haven't seen Adam, Amazon coming out with their, uh, you know, uh, Chinese uh, knockoffs of this thing yet. Um, yeah. I wonder if there's some technical reason why, but I... Can't imagine it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hard to I say. mean, that that would be fine if you know if they if Apple gave you know other people permission to make these things and you know that somebody wanted a trackpad, uh, you know that'd be great. And I think you know 
a lot of people have iPads now and don't even know that you can use a trackpad on it. And uh, I think that would have kind of, you know, even when an older or non-pro iPad, it would be, uh, it would, yeah. it, you know, they, it would be a good thing for them. So um, I would like to, you yeah, know, I would like to see it. Maybe I'll get one for my mini. Could you put yeah. one on a mini? I guess you could put one on. Uh, who knows? I mean, that's, that's what I said. Who knows? I, I think it's a little more far-fetched. I don't see that. Uh, that that it, that uh, that's a that's a little a little hardcore rumor than most of what we talk about yeah. here. So I've heard of I've heard um, this guy before. He's he's got a few things right. So uh, yeah. So that's that could be the why the they uh, this the story right. was out there about yep. that. So um so let's uh, go ahead and move on to beta. Uh, beta testing, of course, was last week. Uh, Thirteen dot five dot five came out. Beta one. And then they do it again. They go to 13.6. And it has to be the same reason they did it last time. Uh, was there, then must, there must be an API included in the, in the, uh, the latest beta. So, you know, Apple does it again. They switch, they, they change gears and they call it uh, a, new, a new name in the, in the middle of it all here. Um, and uh, it's crazy, <laughs> to say the least. And I, were you surprised at all they did this? Uh, sorry, there I am. I actually knew they were going to come out with a, another beta just because the last beta was. Well, new one. Yeah, I knew. Yeah, it was gonna so come I knew out something again. was coming. That, that that they they changed the nomenclature yeah, again. But yeah, the, I, I was just happy because the last the the beta last week was kind of a mess. I kind of told you about that. Um, yeah, they had some right, issues, right. I, so I knew they had to fix that. Um, yeah, I don't know what the API change is. Um, the only difference that we saw in this in the notes is the. Um, there's there's an option to automatically install the operating system update um there right you, you, yeah i was gonna talk about that could, and and some change in the health app so it's not a huge um change and certainly no other changes i could see in uh in the other betas in mac os or uh the watch either so right um yeah i'm just happy that my uh, proximity sensor is back to normal so uh, it's a good thing. Good thing. Um, so yeah, it, it spanned across, you know, for, for like a couple of weeks, you know, May 20th, it's when 13.5 hit June 1st, 13.5.1, as we talked about, came out with the security patch that everybody has right now. Um, and then 13.5.5 beta one was released and then that was, was really buggy. And then, uh, the, we got a little, a little over a week later. Now we're at 13.6 beta two that was released out. Um, so couple of things that stand out i think there's really the only two things we really found um as you mentioned is the automatic um uh, uh automatic updates if you go into settings and in general and under software update most of us now have that button where you can set you know automatically download your all your updates if you tap that in there now um it has two choices you have uh download the ios updates and then install the ios updates and you could turn off install if you want it to just be downloaded and then ready to go and then you can be then you have the choice of being ready so now you have a little more granular control of how updates happen because some people get irritated when the download happens and then and all of a sudden it starts installing and you're and it's like, god yeah, i need my you, phone you read some of the comments uh, uh when they when they did that door. yeah uh, not in a million years would you know people like to grow up yeah of it's course fine. let the thing update what's gonna happen what's the worst that gonna happen yeah yeah of course um, and then uh, another another thing that was added was in the in the health um, app. Um, they've they they now are allowing people who really want to track even more granular how their of their health categories. You actually can go into symptoms and be able to add data uh, in there. You know about any the particular things you have with symptoms and like acne or appetite changes and uh, different pains and chills and congestion and all that stuff. And you can put all the data in there if you so choose and if you really want to, to get more granular in detail in the health app i thought that was interesting I, 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 so you i don't know if you were you weren't too into that right uh, i saw that i don't i i haven't played with it yet it could be part of yeah. this whole contact tracing thing maybe um maybe they could kind of use that along that of that everybody's so about. Oh, crazy on. over uh, or or we could just all you know get corona and uh you know whatever so yeah uh i have no time for people who are that worried about uh this the stupid opinion. no neither I, they either need to get over it or hand in their phone <laughs> <laughs> that's right uh 
and then uh, other last thing that, that was interesting is uh, the in ten uh, thirteen dot six beta was uh, uh, the in an Apple Apple News app your articles it'll actually save your reading position so if you forget where you read something you can actually save where you left off and uh, you can go back to it but that was before you had to go back and skim through it and remember where you had to, where you left off and uh, so that that I thought that was interesting they're 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 really coming up with some. Uh, with some with some cool stuff when it comes to uh uh, uh with uh, with uh, news and news plus yep they have to you know to keep adding features to it uh the app works i mean i have no complaints uh, i use it nightly i read my news and uh and it's fine yeah me too yeah it's all good um so uh yeah Jay, anything else that did you that we missed i don't think we missed anything uh ipad is uh it's getting love too, so it's just, it's got some uh, some good stuff as well. So I think uh, we're on the right track. I think it's gonna be interesting to see is if does thirteen dot uh, uh, six get released before uh, before WWDC. It'd be interesting to see where they're at. If that or they're gonna have um, you know, they're gonna have uh, parallel betas. Uh, they uh, did they with, they did uh, have that for a while last time. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I do recall so they, that. Yeah. I think last yeah. year it was parallel pages too. Um, yeah. yeah, no, I mean, you know, we got to make it, 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 we'll know pretty quick after the uh, iOS 14 if it's going to be uh, as messy as iOS yeah. 13 was. Like, uh, the uh, again, the first three or four betas of uh, iOS uh, 13 was kind of not really good. So I'm hoping, yeah. Oh, I yeah. think this is you know i think every other year they kind of switch and i think this they're they're kind of focused back on trying not to break anything again uh hopefully um although if you're changing the home screen around that's that's a that's a thing you know that's uh that has to work right and yeah. if that's buggy that's pretty much the entire experience of the phone um so yeah we'll see we'll see if it uh if it goes well looking forward to it yeah, yeah. well definitely Definitely see. We'll definitely see what's going to happen. So, all right, let's uh, move, let's change gears a little bit here. And um, we we've talked about Plex a little bit in the last couple of episodes. Uh, I've talked about it as an app, uh, as that which is a great app available for your iPhone and your iPad to be able to watch uh, movies and and your own content uh, by by legally ripping your DVDs and putting them in there. Uh, but Plex TV basically is a, is a is a, is a streaming service, basically. I mean, you get f- the four core things that are available on it is being able to manage your own media, whether it be, comes to maybe videos, your pro, your personal collection of videos, uh, photos, um, and all that stuff. And it's in one place, and it, it, it ma- it's maintains itself on its own server, on its own computer um, that you set up. Uh, doing music and podcasts, you have that. Live TV and DVR, we'll talk about that a little bit. And then... Um, uh, there's a lot of free movies and TV uh, shows that are available on there now, uh, utilizing stuff from content like Warner Brothers and Crackle, Lionsgate, MGM, and more that you can uh, you can dive in and watch too. Of course, probably it's got uh, uh, got ads. Um, so, um, and I had not really got into this for a long time. I always wanted to do it, um, but I never did. And now, just recently, I decided to d- dive in head first and really check it out and. Uh, uh, you've used it for a while, right? And you've got one set up, but what, what did you, you've been, how long have you had it now? And, um, what, what do you use? You mostly use it. For? Um, I think I set mine up. I want to say maybe it's been over. It's probably about two years now. Um, okay. so yeah, I, um, I have, I had a DVD, um, uh, DVD library that I wanted to, I, that's what started it. My, we were yeah. uh, redoing the basement and cleaning the basement out. So we had a, a bunch of DVDs down there. I'm like, what am I going to do with this? So, uh, I, I went in, uh, yeah. I w- went and looked into the Plex and then, uh, basically started ripping them out, uh, and, and got rid of DVDs. Right. Um, of course some of the, but that's not legal. You're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to keep your copies and have backups. Well, well here's, here's, <laughs> a, here's the real question. The, if I, if I got, if, so the DVDs that I had down there were all kind of ripped from Netflix when they did DVDs. 
So, <laughs> yep. so I mean, at this point, it doesn't matter, right? So if I ri- if I ripped a DVD, I know it is. there's there's a, there's always a gray. As everybody should know, there's a gray area when it comes. Well, to there's nothing gray about this. I totally DVDs, stole so. it because I ripped it from the Netflix. So yeah. I, I I had Netflix and they sent me DVDs yeah. and I ripped those to the blank DVDs. You're, you're back in those days when the DVD service, which they still and then have, I ripped by those the DVDs into my Plex server now. So, you know, whatever. So I did that, yeah. and then. Um, yeah, uh, I initially put it on uh, like a laptop that I had lying around a Windows laptop that didn't do so well. So I ended yeah, up buying, yeah. uh, kind of like Guy, Guy did, um, a f- fairly cheap. Hundred dollar. This was like three hundred fifty dollars. I'm looking at now, but it's beefy enough. Uh, yeah. And I had a te- I, I I don't know where I got it, but I had a ten terabyte drive that I stuck in there too. Yeah. So. Um, that's what it is. I have it hooked up. Uh, it's headless. I don't have any uh, monitor attached to it, so I could, uh, you know, just. Uh, yeah, I've got mine on a on a uh, four port K- KVM. Yeah, so switch, I just remote so desktop. Keyboard video. Yeah. Well, so, so I can get to on it. There. But you can re- you can remote. Yeah, you can remote desktop. Um, they had a Plex Pass uh, sale that I ended up getting, so I got the Plex Pass. Yeah. Um, and I think I got it because you were. You, uh, it was a mobile sync. That's why I wanted it. Um, so mobile sync is, um, um, if you have a, the Plex pass, you could use your, uh, get your iPad out, connect to your Plex server and actually download the download. movie to your iPad. So you can watch it on a plane or something like that. And then yeah. delete it out, which was kind of neat. Right. Um, and, and yeah, it's, it's, it's great. So it, it, you know, it doesn't take up a lot of space and it's, um, easy to manage and um you know i put have the app on all my devices i i actually have um i was telling did i i don't know if we were live yet but i have a oh, we were live i have an oculus uh go head uh vr headset and uh mm-hmm. there's a plex app for that a real plex app so i could actually sit on my couch right. now and uh watch uh the movies uh from my plex server on uh on my vr set which yeah. is actually a great kind of thing um so yeah, yeah, I love it. Yeah, because I'm losing my. Did you uh, did you dabble in anything else like uh, music or photos or any other like other videos? I, I put my photos on there. Uh, I think I'm syncing them from. I don't remember what I'm syncing them from. Like a, just more or less could be like a backup, but also a place you can do a quick yeah, show. Yeah, right? uh, I mean, I I put my a couple photos on here just to kind of see what it did, and you know, it doesn't do much. Uh, yeah, same here. You know. Uh, it's same type of interface, like as photos. Yeah, I don't have any music on there. I mean, I have so many other things to to keep my photos and music on that it's not really needed to do yeah. that. Um, I, yeah, I play the music. I I put it in there, and it's it's yeah, interesting. The only thing I do is uh, right, uh, movies. How many movies you got? I got two seventy five. Yeah, I'm well, well behind yeah. you here. I got seventy six. So. I got a lot of I got a lot of DVDs to rip here. I got DVDs I still have that I pulled out of uh, storage. I'm like, oh my god, I got sleep. I'm trying these to remember movies. how. And a lot of a lot of them are a lot of them are pretty old. I'm so. trying to remember yeah. there. I had a process down to when I burned them. I forgot. I use a uh, handbrake. Is, I think is, is I used handbrake, on, on, but on, maybe not. Yeah. I think I might have found something off a of set app that did it uh, better for me. Um, I can't remember what I used. Yeah, I'll have to check that. So, um, yeah, um, it's, it's it's cool. But but the intent is uh, on on your iPhone or your iPad is being able to use that as a head at the head end and being able to take that with you and be able to watch that stuff. So it's it's pretty it's pretty slick. Um, and then of course it also has TV shows. You can get involved with that too and download a lot of TV shows uh, you want to watch. But uh, as I mentioned, it it has its own content too on Plex, uh, which include it breaks down uh, uh, movies. Uh, as well as uh, news shows, web shows, podcasts, music. So it's really a uh, a a big head end of of lots of of entertainment that you can watch, um, it, which 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 makes it really impressive. Uh, what what it what it's what's capable of doing. Right. Um, I don't know if you watched any of the, the, the other movies. No, I did. I haven't. But I, that was that was added. I think about six months ago they added uh, additional TV. Uh, channels for um and they have uh free movies too um right. they have music on title so you could you could actually do title yeah you can get us you can get a 30 like a six 30 day uh, trial of title i i, I, I didn't want to bother because you have to cancel it when you're done it's like, yeah, right. it's, 
pain in the butt. <laughs> yeah, uh, no uh, ruptures, things like that. So, I mean, they're trying, um, you know. Uh, yeah. And then the podcast, you could actually listen to your podcast. You could actually, uh, yeah, could actually, it's in um, one place, you know. Subscribe to In Touch with iOS. Yeah, exactly. There. I mean, again, this is for me, it's more of a, it's it's less of a music and listening app and more of a watching app. So, you know, things that generally I could do, you know, without Plex, I'm going to do without Plex. I'm going to listen to my podcast with the Apple podcast. I'm going to listen to uh, music on Apple Music yeah. with my headphones or my home pod. So, um, you know, this is basically for me just a, uh, kind of movies uh and a couple of shows i haven't in, in there too so yeah and then the other piece that i know you haven't gotten involved in but i wanted to check out is uh is the actual live tv being able to uh get a external third-party device and actually um watch live tv but not only watch it but you actually it plex provides a actual dvr allows you to record the show which which is amazing um it's made by a company called the uh, home run home run hd uh, and we'll put a sh- link in the show notes for that. And there's different types of boxes. The, uh, the one I have is the extreme, which has two tuners built into it. And what you do is you hook up a, uh, an external HD antenna over the air antenna, and it'll, it'll scan for the channels. Now, you know, buyer beware, it'll vary how the channels come in and, uh, what you'll be able to v- to view because of where you live and how, how TV channels work. And we're both in relative metropolitan areas that, that, that comes in pretty well, but it also depends in the room. If you're going to use what type of antenna you have, I just bought one of those, uh, those really thin flat HD antennas and I wanted, I wanted to try it out. It was, it was, it, but it's, it's really cool. And it's got, you know, it's picking up all the channels that are va- all the, that are available on all your local stations, as well as all the other extended channel stations, you know? So like here's ABC is, is channel seven. So you have seven, one, seven, two, and, uh, and you know, NBC is same way. Um, and, and, and all the other, you know, independent channels that are, that are available, but they all, have, all have great old shows you get to watch and, and as well as all the network shows. And, and, there are, and actually some of the channels that are on here are also on, on cable too. Um, and it does, uh, it, it does a great job of recording. Unfortunately, the antenna I have is not giving it great reception, but, uh, it, it's sufficient. The only reason I'm, I'm kind of more into it is of anything is, is the fact that I, I can record these chan- these, these shows, I can set recordings and just like you could do on any DVR, I have Comcast cable. You can set that on your X1 DVR. Um, same thing here, but th- this allows you to actually record the show. Not only does it have a smart system where it 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 skips all the commercials for you, it records it without the commercials. It's amazing. I I I, if I, I shouldn't admit what show I recorded, but I wanted to. I hadn't watched in quite a long time from the seventies. The the love. That's a good show. And so it was a fun yeah, show not? to watch. I, I actually enjoyed that show. That's why I wanted to watch it. And uh, so uh, and Joyce DeWitt on there. Remember her? Yeah, from Three's <laughs> Captain Stewart. Joyce DeWitt. And, no, Joyce DeWitt uh, with Three's Company. She was, she was a, she was a guest star. Uh, uh, so, uh, so we, uh, so I recorded it and it, it perfectly got rid of the commercial and, and it recorded it. And the other thing too, is of course it records on the external drive that you set up in the Plex server. And then the files there as a streamed file, you can convert it to an MP4 and you, you have that recording permanently. That's your, that's your copy. Um, which is, is pretty slick. I, I, I was very impressed with that. Um, it, it, ha- it has a, a live TV guide. So you, you're looking at the, the guide and then you set a schedule, whatever shows you want to record is your, in your DVD schedule and you browse through your channels. And I believe they also do have a, um, uh, another, the box that, uh, the, uh, that you can get a cable card and then use cable TV with it. Uh, but it's pretty pricey. I think that, that box was probably right around $250. And this one here is still a little pricey around, around 150, 100, uh, 179, maybe, or something like that. Um, but, uh, that's the thing you have to have an extra piece of hardware and plus an antenna, uh, to get this part to work, but you can get the one with cable TV and, uh, and do that. But it, it impressed me the fact that it, you, you've got all this in one place, uh, all this entertainment and, and have you control it, which is great compared to your cable company. And you could, if you're a cord cutter, you probably could use this and be a cord cutter because Plex has apps across all the platforms, not, not only on your iPad, on your iPhone, your Apple TV, uh, Roku, all the platforms you can get, you can get this app and be able to watch um, all this stuff. So and I said, I assume like you said, you had, you hadn't dabbled in that. I looked into it and, and then think I that? have a, I have a sling box instead. And I decided just to right. keep with that. But uh, the sling, 
Yeah, and Sling's changed a lot. Now it's got its own. It's its own like service now instead of it being like they, a a box that you hooked up that you could hook to a cable they, box. They still have watch. it. They still sell those. So they have both. Yeah. Oh, they do. So I have okay. the just the, the the box, which is what they call a throwing. Uh, it throws it, so it throws a signal from wherever it, it's coming into to somewhere else, and uh, um, you know it it works fine we we bought it when we moved to london so we could watch us uh shows and um yeah now we now we have it hooked up in our, uh our beach house in new jersey so we could watch uh giants football games that are broadcast in philadelphia so uh that's all we use it for really but it, it does a job it's not the best quality in the world but it's better than nothing um and uh the, yeah they they kind of abandoned a lot of that when they moved to their tv thing so they're still making them but they're not very good to be honest with you yeah so um so yeah that's plex and we'll have i'll have all the links in the show notes uh for uh for what we talked about with plex and then check it out and uh uh what 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 did you say that when you got the Plex Pass uh, that that you can get like a monthly or a yearly or you can actually uh, buy a lifetime? You bought the we both bought, bought the lifetime. lifetime. What, what what were you gaining? What were you gaining by, by I, getting that? I went. I just took a look at their website, and this is what they see. So you get um, so you can't do the live TV and DVR uh, without that. So you, that's why you right. need that. Uh, for sure, you need that because of live yeah, TV. DVR, the mobile right? sync is the reason why I got it at the time because I wanted that. Um, right. The rest of it, um, there's hard. Uh, they had hardware accelerating uh, streaming, better streaming, uh, better bandwidth, right. um, and then uh, it says free access to the Plex apps. Enjoy free access. Was it? <laughs> do you have to pay for the Plex apps if you don't have the pass? No, no, they're free. So it might be just some. I don't know why I would be saying that. That's yeah. kind of weird. Um, yeah, so. uh, and it was a good price. I don't even. It was two years ago. I don't remember what I paid for. It. I think it was a little bit under a hundred dollars for the lifetime thing. Um, if I'm thinking right, but maybe I'm wrong. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So check it out. I paid. Yeah, I paid one hundred and nineteen dollars. Yeah, something like that. I mean, Think about how you divide out the divide out that for as much entertainment you're going to get the budget pay for. You can do some cord cutting and make up for that pretty quickly. It's a flat, you know, it's a flat, uh, it's a flat fee. So, um, all right. With, um, with that, let's, um, let's, uh, talk about, did you throw in an app pick here? I thought, is that you? Yeah, that I thought it in, um, because, um, they added the, I wanted to talk about last week, but we didn't get a chance, but they added the, yeah, go ahead. Uh, so it's remote desktop, uh, the Microsoft's, uh, version of remote desktop connection or yep. server. I forgot what they call it, whatever. Um, but it's, uh, it's, it's in the app store. We could put a link in there. And, and the reason why mm-hmm. I added it is because two weeks ago they did an update, which is, uh, uh, makes the trackpad compatible with it, um, for the iPad. And it really makes a huge difference. It basically, if you remote to, uh, what I have to do is re- remote to Windows desktops for my job. And uh, if you do that with the iPad, um, it, it feels just like you're on a Windows computer. The um, the mouse is a mouse. Uh, the pointer points where you need yeah. it to point to. Um, it, and it just works. Um, it's a little bit small um, on the 11-inch screen um, to to. You know, but it, 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 you know, it, it does what it needs to do. Yeah, but in a pinch. In a, in a pinch, pinch, it definitely works. And certainly it's easier to carry around an iPad sometimes to uh, to a location where you might have to do some support. Um, so I just pack along my reading glasses along with that and, and, and all's good. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. It, this is on iOS, I, right? You're talking uh, about the iOS iPad version? iOS, yes. Yep. So we'll have a link to the actual app uh, in the app yeah, store. I'll see if I can find it somewhere. Uh, I, you got yep, it. It's already already, already got nice. a link for you, buddy. <laughs> uh, this is uh, this is available actually for the iPhone or the iPad. Both for both both uh, will will work, but it's yeah, it'd be pretty tough. Yeah, to, I I, zip, I think I've done that on, on on a real pinch. <laughs> I had I had a yeah, I had really a server desperate. having problems, and this was a couple of years ago, and I used it. Uh, might have been Team Viewer or something like that, but I have my I was at, at a, my son was doing a soccer game uh, in the park, and somebody called me, and I'm like, 
okay. So I pulled out my phone and I did a remote desktop from my iPhone and it was, it was painful, but it was yeah. not as painful as, you know, stopping what you're doing and getting in a car. So, yeah. 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 So um, my app this week is called Good Links. And it's a kind of a read it later uh, type of link manager, but it's got some amazing automated uh, functions. And, you know, back in the old days, I mean, I, everybody used to use Instapaper and Pocket. Do you, you use those two services? I used Instapaper. Uh, yeah, I, I uh, did uh, Pocket for a while. They're, 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 yeah. they're pretty old and, and haven't really gone much. So, uh, But with a lot of changes, what happened with the iOS, um, you, there are a lot more read it later type apps and this one this one was uh was was pretty interesting to me um and it uh it does it just uh, just got released actually and um you know like apps like reader and uh, news explorer is another one i've talked about before being able to uh to uh be able to add links so this actually lets you uh, add links and and be able to read them later and what i thought was cool is the way you actually can um uh you can actually uh put them in a list and organize different, different uh, articles or websites, whatever it is, um, and go back to it. But the nice cool thing about it is, is, is it's uh, a reading experience. It really gives you an amazing reading experience. I mean, it's just like having the reader view and it does it for you. I mean, you just go in and organize these, these articles and it, and it, and it works really well. Um, the cool thing about it is it, there's, there's a Mac version, iOS version, which is on iPad and iPhone, and you pay one price for all three, which is unusual. You don't usually would only pay, you'd have to pay for the Mac version as well as, um, the uh, uh the ios version as well uh and the cool thing about it is is uh it does uh it does a lot of syncing uh between all those uh bet- between all three of those platforms so I, i'm i'm seriously thinking about maybe using this as a secondary because i'm i'm a big news follower obviously I, you for 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 you guys for the uh for the podcast that's how i get a lot of my content is to when I find out about things, I, I have a uh, reference to, to tell you about it. And um, I thought it was pretty cool. I don't know if you had a chance to look yeah, at this. I will. Yeah. Check it out. It's a, it's a brand new app and, um, and uh, check it out. I, I, I'm still playing around with it. I only just downloaded it uh, today. So it was, it's, it just came out. So uh, yesterday actually it came out uh, and uh, yeah, check it out. It, it gives you a nice flexible way of being able to um, organize uh, links of, of different articles. And uh, I'll be talking about this app more as I as I use it. So, um, with that, I think we've come to a close for the show. And like, we got some uh, we, we got some good content today. So I, I hope enough. you gearing up for a big it. show in a couple of weeks. Yep. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. We um, don't want to go look crazy because you know, our the anniversary show was a little long, so <laughs> but it was worth it because uh, we had a lot of blasts. Anybody didn't get a chance to listen to that yet? Go back on episode one hundred, uh, take a listen. Uh, it was a lot of fun with Kelly Gumont. Um, yeah, uh, but yeah, we we got got to gear up. Uh, she's fun. Ahead. I liked her. Um, yeah, she's. I'm starting she's to good listen people. to her uh, her thing now. I subscribe to her. Yeah, the the daily observations yes, podcast. Yes, uh, it's nice. Mac observers. Yeah. Yep, it's good stuff. And yep. It's short and sweet. It's a short show, nice 25, 30 minutes. So, good, good, quick listen. So let's uh, go ahead and wrap things up for this week. Should we do that, Warren? Works for me. I'm I'm ready to go to sleep. <laughs> Come on, it's still early. <laughs> That's all right, everybody. That's a wrap for this week. Please uh, send your comments, questions, suggestions to our email address, feedback at intouchwithios.com. I want to hear I want to hear from you guys. Send us an email, feedback at intouchwithios.com. No matter what it is, I'd like to hear about it. Uh, give us some reviews on uh, iTunes. Uh, be able to get, we were always looking for good reviews and, uh, and or, or bads if you're, if something's not right, but uh, please send the feedback to the email address and we'd love to hear from you. Um, you also can follow us on Twitter. Shout out to us at in touch with iOS and uh, you can subscribe in your favorite podcatcher, which includes Apple podcasts and many others. There's plenty of them out there, including good pods. We talked about that last week. Uh, check us out there as well. Uh, but uh, be sure you go to our website and you'll find out the, uh, Everything about us at intouchwithios.com. All the links are on the right side of that page of how to listen to us. They're all there. Uh, I am Dave Ginsberg, and you can find me on Twitter at DaveG65. Warren, you're at the Mac to the Future page. And anything going on over yeah, there? Yeah, I mean, people are, you know, active. Uh, a couple of, uh, you know, people getting ready for the uh, big announcements and uh, uh, getting, getting oh, yeah. a little uh, antsy. So, yeah, it's uh, it's it's been... It's been nice and and civil 
which is a good thing. So, yeah, it seems like there hasn't been any hostile nope. things going on. But it's a yep. fun page. There's never much hostile stuff. So you guys keep it. In yeah, check, the, so. the, uh, the, the members are good. I mean, it's, it's a good. It's a, yes, we are. We have a lot of fun on that page. That's Mac to the Future on the. That's a Facebook uh, uh, group. And uh, come check us out. I'm out there as well. I always post some fun things. So. Anyway, thanks for listening, everybody. We really appreciate it, and uh, we will talk to you again soon.